Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 12th chapter. As Jesus taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers they will receive the greater condemnation. Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, This poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. The Gospel of the Lord. Maybe it's just me these past few weeks, or months, all right, fine, years, felt exhausting. You know, maybe it's always like this, or like I said, maybe it's just me. Um, I once heard someone say that becoming an adult is saying that next week things will slow down over and over, week after week, until you die. I mean, nothing feels truer than that. If you have been one who has found the opportunity to slow down, to rest, or what's that Sabbath thing I've heard about before? You know, good for you. And whether you have or have not found that opportunity, for everyone, there are just so many things around us competing for our attention, competing for our time, our energy, our resources. We can just do and do and give and give, and there's always something more. I bet many, if not all of us, have had these moments where we feel completely spent, whether physically or emotionally or or both. One more phone call you have to make would push you over the edge The thought of one more acre of harvest makes you feel numb. One more choice or chore or task or question. One more student or patient or customer coming to you. One more treatment to receive. One more place asking for our money and our time. One more is one too many. Anyone else? What leads us to this type of Spending, we'll say. What causes us to pour every ounce of our being into something that's outside of ourselves? Well, in many cases, I'd say that the answer to that is our passion. You know, we spend ourselves dry because we love doing what we do. We love farming and building and cooking and teaching and caring for others and providing a service to the community or, or any of the myriad of things that you all and we all do on a day-to-day basis. Having a passion for something means that we enjoy it and we want to see it done well. We have a passion for other people or for our family or for our children, so we want to make sure they're taken care of. Or maybe we have a passion for an organization or a cause, so we give of our time in volunteering and serving, or we give with our thinking and our creativity to make things happen, or we give of our money to fill a need. Having a passion for something or some things is wonderful, but I think we all know that if we're not careful, it's pretty easy to let that passion deplete us. But I think there's also many times where we have to be honest and say that We might spend ourselves out completely, not because of passion, but because of necessity. 
Sometimes we find ourselves working to the brink of exhaustion because if we don't, the bills won't get paid, or an important job won't get done, or someone we care about won't get taken care of otherwise. Sometimes we spend ourselves to exhaustion because we're not in charge, and the world is telling us, do this or else. There are a lot of things that cause us to feel completely spent. As I've said, sometimes it's because we want to do those things, and sometimes it's because we have to do those things. And I think that kind of thinking is helpful to keep in mind as we look at today's gospel story. In the passage we get this morning, there are two things uh, that Jesus tells us about. And so I wanted to take first a look at the second part, which starts at verse 41. And so we hear that Jesus and his disciples, they're in the temple in Jerusalem. And Mark tells us that Jesus sits down opposite the treasury and he watches as people are putting money into the treasury. He watches as many rich people come by and and put in large sums of money into that treasury. But then after all of them pass by, they witness a poor widow who comes by and puts in two measly copper coins. And after witnessing this, Jesus tells his disciples, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. All right, you know, quite often when we or others hear this story, we immediately think that Jesus is lifting up this poor widow as an example of how to live faithfully and follow and and serve God. And that can certainly be the case. She is a great example of that. But if we ask ourselves the question from earlier, I think it might show something more. So let's ask, did she want to spend all that she had in this way? Or did she have to spend those coins in the treasury? Like I started to say, if she wanted to do so, if she wanted to put this sacrificial amount of money into the temple treasury, we have this wonderful story of generosity and faithfulness. You know, the widow's offering to the temple could be the launching point for this great sermon on stewardship, you know, and how we're not called to just give a little bit of what we have or not even that measly 10% tithe, but give every single thing that we have to the work of God's kingdom. Jesus said, out of her poverty, she's put in everything she had, all she has to live on. What a story. What a sermon that would be. Think of the passion this widow had. What incredible generosity to want to give so much of herself. And that certainly could have been the case. But let's think about the flip side. What if this part of the story was not about the widow wanting to give all that she had, but having to give all that she had? What if she only dropped those coins into the treasury because of the necessity to do so? What if the rulers of the day told her that she owed that amount to them or else? What if the religious leaders said that this much was needed so that she can enter the temple in order to worship? You know, if if you were rich, that contribution was simply a drop in the bucket, but if you were poor, it was possibly all you had to live on. It was everything you needed to live on. And understand that that can feel like a jump in how we interpret the story until we remember what came before it. So back to this first part of the story. Again, we're in the temple. And Jesus is surrounded by the crowds and his disciples, and he's, he says, beware, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets 
They devour widows' houses, and for the sake of appearance, they say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. Other than feeling a little targeted, like the long robe, and I don't mind being greeted down on the market like with a little bit of respect, and I get this chair up front, you know, and I'm going to stand up here in a little bit and do all the prayers, so, okay, calm down, Jesus. But I think Jesus is pointing out the hypocrisy of religious leaders, those leaders who make it all about themselves instead of serving God and caring for our neighbors. And that's what Jesus has been talking about for the past two chapters here in the Gospel of Mark. If you look, today's story comes at the end of chapter 12. And so if we back up a chapter, back at the beginning of chapter 11 in Mark's Gospel, we get the Palm Sunday story, right? The triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. And that follows, of course, all of those stories that we've been hearing for week after week after week of Jesus teaching and leading his disciples and calling them into different ways of living and them still not really getting it. But after Jesus enters Jerusalem to that large large crowd of people in that big parade, he now in these two chapters starts going in and out of the temple. And we get a couple different stories. So he curses a fig tree. He goes back into the temple to turn over the tables of the money changers and drive out the ones who are selling and buying inside the temple. As he's there, he faces questions and accusations from the religious leaders. They ask things like, by what authority are you doing these things? And they try and trap him by saying, is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor? What's going to happen in the resurrection? Which commandment is the first of all? Now, sometimes questions are of genuine curiosity and interest, but a lot of the time simply trying to trap Jesus because he has been calling out the religious leaders for their hypocrisy. And then after today's story, and we start going into chapter 13, we begin to hear those final warnings and predictions from Jesus about what is to come, especially him warning us about the destruction of that very temple they're in. I mean, hearing all of this, it seems like Jesus has moved on from teaching about discipleship. And if that's the case, then Jesus pointing out this sacrificial contribution of the poor widow probably has a lot to do with those religious leaders who, as he said, are devouring widows' houses. It's a different way to think of it. But whether or not she wants to or has to give her offering in this way to the temple, I think we still have a lot to learn from her. Right? She's No matter what she does, she is a model of faithful living. She does what the rich man back in chapter 10, that remember that one who was told to sell all his possessions and possessions and give them to the poor? You know, she does what he is not able to do. Because, as Jesus said, she gives everything she has, all she has to live on. She does whatever she has to do in order to enter the temple to honor and worship God, despite the challenges that are put before her by the temple leaders. I think in these final stories before the beginning of his passion, Jesus really is calling out the church, calling out the leaders, calling out the members of the church for distorting the truth of what God has sent him to do among us. Those things that we hear in Luke's gospel, right? Of lifting up the lowly, scattering the proud, bringing down the powerful. But in all of this, I think Jesus is also calling us to a new way of living. Practicing our faith with genuine genuine generosity. Turning away from our own hypocrisy and self-deception. There will always be things vying for our attention that we both want to do and have to do. 
in those things that we want to do, we know Jesus celebrates with us the ways in which we offer ourselves to those things and places. And then when there are things that we have to do, Jesus walks with us. And he walks with us in those things that are just, and he stands with us as we stand up against the things that are unjust. Maybe in all of this, Jesus is calling us from having to follow him to wanting to follow him, calling us forward to courageously give of our time and talent and treasure and more fully participate in God's work of lifting up the lowly and turning the world upside down for the sake of every child of God. I mean... Isn't that what Jesus was sent here for in the first place? Amen.